Tonight was a good, good night for Michigan fans. Not so much for Penn State fans. So Penn State's at home. James Franklin made, like, just about literally every wrong decision at every step of the way, okay? So, you know, usually when you lose a big game, it doesn't fall on one person. But I would argue this one, like, almost 100% falls on James Franklin, okay? So the the big one, everybody knows, but... but uh, four minutes to go in the game. It's a one-possession game. Uh, uh, Penn State has the ball on their own 30. Michigan, as we've said many times, has essentially not even, not even, not even figuratively, they literally are not even trying to pass the ball. They're just trying to run the clock out to win the game. Your defense has been lights out. Four minutes left. You're on your own 30. You punt the ball back. You have plenty of time. You get the stop. You have two whatever minutes left to get to, 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 to get the ball with a chance to win. Goes for it on his own 30. Doesn't get it. Next play, Michigan scores the touchdown that ultimately sealed the victory. Then, oh, by the way, you drive the length of the field, score a touchdown to be down nine, and you decide to again go for two points to make it a seven-point game when he could have made it a one-possession game. You don't get I it. Hated that. I hated that decision, so I immediately texted you. You did? And I was just like, that is such a trash call. I understand what analytics says. I don't care. Like that, let, that You just let, basically deflated the game right let, there. Let me on jump in play. on this real quick because I actually thought even in the first half, so for people who weren't watching the game, Penn State scored right before halftime to make what the lead what would have been 14-10. to 10. But they decided to go for it too there, and I understand you chase the. I understand you, you, you know you 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 go for it there early. You have plenty of time to make up for it. I actually thought that was bad because you score a touchdown right before the half. You have all the momentum. The the stadium's popping, and then all of a sudden you miss the two point conversion, and the stadium's deflated right before halftime. So I didn't mean to cut you off. It just feels like every decision he made was bad, and you nailed the late two-point uh, conversion attempt that did not go down. Now you're down by two scores, even with the onside kick. Whatever, the floor is yours. I'm talking enough, but the floor is yours, Jason. Go ahead. So I've said this for a while, and you made the point in the first segment. It might be the best take that I have. I definitely have the opposite as well. This is James Franklin. I said this about Michigan last week. I said, I don't even care whether Harbaugh's there or not. They're still going to end up winning this game because this is what James Franklin does. James Franklin recruits and loses big games at about the same clip. He is not just an average game day coach. He is a bad game day coach in big games. Bad. Not mediocre. Not, eh, you know, C. No, he's close to an F, folks. He does this. They are. 3-17 Three and seventeen against the top ten. One and fourteen against Ohio State and Michigan teams that are ranked in the top ten. They're now four and sixteen overall against Ohio State and Michigan. One and six versus top ten teams at home. Five and nine versus ranked teams at home. One and eight versus the top five. Three and seven versus Michigan. There's no coach for Michigan, and they still lose at home with 110,000 people in the stands. Mm-hmm. And they gave him a 10-year, $70 million contract. Even at the time. It's not like he's been there for two years and this is a project. Like, no, This is what the guy is. He recruits. He can motivate. He can speak to a room. He can charm people. But when it comes down to it on Saturday, there is just no reason why you would want him to be the guy on the sidelines making decisions. You're right. He made almost every bad decision that you could have made here. I I hate it, absolutely despise that two-point call, which you mentioned, because I understand what analytics says, but there's a problem with analytics. And this is something that I know Nick Saban has said and others have said in terms of, yeah, but just the idea that you you have to live with the decisions you make, I think is what Saban said. For me, it is analytics can contextualize a lot, but what it cannot do is account for the human psyche. It can't account for the optics of the moment and how pressure, you know, is felt amongst these young athletes dependent upon the situation that they find themselves in. And in that moment, you basically, if you get that, you've still got a lot of work to do. I understand that you're going to need a two-point conversion potentially, but you you basically want to, I think, keep yourself in the game in terms of a one-possession score as long as you can, because the pressure is then ratcheted up on the young men from Michigan, who then, after they stop that one play when they're already up and they still 
understand that you have a lot more to accomplish. Once they stop that, effectively the game feels like it's over because it is, and the stadium told you all you needed to know, and then after the game, they booed James Franklin. I don't know if it was 110000 or if it was just ninety five, but a lot of people booed James Franklin. They paid him a lot of money to do what? Never field an offense that, that seems to be able to score against anybody relevant. I don't care how good their defense is. They can't outscore anybody. They're basically a penthouse Iowa at this <laughs> point in time when it comes to their offense against anybody worthy. And this is not a this-year problem. This is a multi-year problem. And you paid this guy, and nothing has changed. That's I, I saw this years ago. I'm not saying the guy can't coach at all. I'm saying that he is vastly, vastly overrated as a game day coach. And this is not new to anyone that's watched Penn State football in the last decade. So two quick things because I do want to get to DeSager. One, I think the especially frustrating thing is, well, there's two things that are especially frustrating about today besides all of the mismanagement. One, I thought Michigan was trying to give you the game. I mean, they, they yeah, you're right. You're not wrong. Yeah, they were trying to give you the game. And I think that to me is where I would just be out of my mind if I'm a, a Penn State fan. I understand, you know, Drew Aller, Richard, whatever, whatever excuse you want to use. Here's the bottom line. Two things happened this year. You got Penn State or Ohio State, excuse me, in a year where I guarantee you they will never have a worse offense than they do this year. They just, they just won't. First year quarterback, he's not that good. Even next year he'll be better if they don't recruit over him and bring in a transfer, okay? Or they just have somebody in the program. That's one. Worst offense Ohio State has ever had can't beat him. Michigan literally didn't know who was going to be coaching them until an hour before kickoff because they had the whole injunction thing. Is, is Harbaugh going to coach? Is he not? You had th- There's never going to be a better spot to at the very least split and, and you know, potentially play yourself into the conference championship game. So that has to be so frustrating if you're a Penn State fan. And two, it, it's funny because coming into the year, you could kind of argue, well, you know, this is a program that when you go to a 12-team playoff, they've historically gone 10-2. and two. They're kind of one of those teams that's always on the fringe but never quite in. But now I'm watching Oregon. They're awesome. USC, UCLA, and Washington. I mean, Washington is obviously a top-five team right now. And so I just bring it up because – the landscape is about to get tougher. And so if if you can't win the games that matter, and I know every year they're not going to have Michigan, Ohio State, Oregon, USC, all these teams on the schedule, but the landscape is only going to get tougher in the Big Ten. So I, I don't know how Penn State fans do it, and I think it's almost like the worst possible place to be like you want to be ju- like like if you're not gonna if you if you're a blue blood program that has the capability to win national championships, and I think if everything broke right, Penn State could. This is the worst place you could be because you're in a spot where you're you're just good enough where you can't really make the move, but you're also you're not there and you're I I just don't think this is your Jason this is incredible this is your ten for James Franklin that's what I'm saying I mean it's not like he just got, it, you don't feel like he's been there that long but he's been there forever and this is the same thing every year so. Yes. Unbelievable, frustrating loss for Penn State fans. If we have any Penn State fans listening, I I know we're supposed to remain unbiased in this stuff. I'm sorry for you. I I just I feel bad because you are between a rock and a hard place. You're obviously not getting rid of them, but this guy isn't getting the job done.